Well, the fundamental object of linear algebra is the matrix. So this leads naturally to the question, what is the matrix? And the matrix is just an extension of the vector concept. So we can think about this as an n tuple of m tuples. So I have some basic tuple, and I'm going to take a set of them. So, for example, vectors are tuples. So here is a vector, and both of these are three tuples. So I have two vectors, and so I can take the two tuple of vectors v, u, and that's going to give us a matrix. It's convenient. Not really necessary, but it certainly makes it a lot easier to look at, a lot easier to interpret, uh, to have one set of vectors written out horizontally and the other set written vertically. And so for a variety of reasons, mathematicians choose to write the base vectors vertically. So here's my first vector, v, 1, 3, negative 2. We're going to set that up as a column. And our second vector, 1, negative 1, 4. And I'm going to set that up also as a column. So now remember, tuples do have an order to them, so it does make a difference whether I put this one first or this one first. And again, I've chosen to put this one first, this one second. Also, to keep the lines of text from running into each other, we also, as with tuples, will throw a set of parentheses around to indicate that I now have a matrix. Now, there's a couple of terms that we use when we talk about matrices, and so we have the dimension of a matrix, that's going to be n by m, where n always refers to the number of rows, the number of horizontal rows, and m refers to the number of columns, the number of vertical columns. So there's our dimension. If I have a matrix A, the entries of that matrix are going to be usually lowercase the same letter, ij, where ij is the value in the ith row jth column. Now, if i and j are numbers, which they are because they're telling us, for example, third row, fifth column, the one problem with this particular notation is that if we write that, those tend to look like a single number. So we often see the notation a i comma j to express the entries of a matrix. And one important idea, given any sort of matrix a, the entries a i i, the entries where the i and i, the row and column values are the same, these form what's known as the main diagonal of the matrix. So, for example, let's take a matrix that looks like this, and we want to describe the dimensions and find a couple of entries, including the main diagonal. So, the dimensions correspond to the number of rows and the number of columns, so we count them. So, this matrix has one, two, three horizontal rows, and one, two, three, four vertical columns. So, this is a three by four matrix. Again, remember, row always goes first, column always goes second. Now, again, the entry a i j is going to be the value in the i row jth column. So when I find this entry a 3 1, I'm looking at the entry in the third row, first column. So that's going to be 1, 2, third row, first column, that entry is going to be 8. Likewise, this entry a 1 comma 3, well here I've split up those uh, that location, so this is still, first thing is the row, second thing is a column, this is the first row, third column. And so first row is this one, third column over, that gives me the entry negative 1, so a 1 comma 3 is going to have value negative 1. A3, 5 is the 1, 2, 3rd row, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th column entry, except there isn't any. And finally, my main diagonal, those are going to be the entries where the row and column number are the same. So that's A1, 1, A2, 2, A3, 3. So I can pick those off. First row, first column is 3. Second row, second column is 4. Third row, third column is going to be negative 1. And there isn't going to be any entries after that.